What's happening, everybody? Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another episode in our Starter Pack series, right? These are the must-have albums if you are a newbie to a certain genre of music. And as we're going to do going forward, sub-genres of music, right? So we're going to break things down ridiculously. We're going to get to the nitty-gritty, right? So we already did the 10 must-have heavy metal albums if you're a newbie. A lot of discussion, a lot of controversy, right? But Pete, some of these bands, they're not really metal. They're more hard rock. Guys, I know there's a fine line between what is heavy metal and what is hard rock, right? But a lot of the albums that I chose back when I was a young hard rock and metal head were all considered heavy metal, right? They're great starter point, entry points for anybody looking to explore heavy music. You know, you can't argue that ACDC and Black Sabbath and Motorhead and all the bands I mentioned, the Scorpions, those are all heavy bands. And if you're someone brand new to metal and heavy music, I don't care what age you are, you can't argue those classics, right? And again, not all of these picks might be what people consider the de facto best release or best album ever from that band. They're starting points. There's usually qualities about the ones that I'm picking that are great for newbies, that are great for people who have never explored this style of music before. So if you're someone who is well-versed in these type, these genres, these shows aren't necessarily for you. These aren't geared towards you. I get a lot of people saying, oh, but those aren't the classic albums. Those aren't the greatest albums from those bands. No one is saying they're supposed to be. They're not, right? A lot of the ones that I'm picking might not even be close to my favorite albums from the bands, but they are the ones that are great for someone new to those bands, new to this style of music, right? So these episodes will be invaluable to people looking to discover a certain genre or subgenre of music, right? So take it for what it is, right? If you are, if you are well versed in, in these kinds of music, that, that you know, just kind of play along and, and feel free to, to pick your choices below. But just remember, these are supposed to be for people who are brand spanking new, never listened to hard rock before. Maybe they're jazz and prog fans, right? Never listened to metal before, right? Or are metal fans never listened to prog before, but they want a way to get into that style of music. That's that's who these episodes are for. So let's get started on the hard rock picks. Ten must-have albums if you're brand new to hard rock. Again, some of these artists could bleed other places. Hard rock and, you know, the, the line between hard rock and metal is very, very small. There could be a couple bands on the heavy metal episode that a lot of people and already have claimed that's more hard rock, Pete. I get it, right? But there have been many times over the years where Rambo Rising and Back in Black considered metal albums. To me, Blackout is a metal album, right? And there's some of that I might be talking about today that people thought deserve to be on the metal episode. To me, these are hard rock albums, right? So don't get too wrapped up in it. Just have fun with this. And for those who are looking to discover albums in these genres, here you go, right? So we're going to start, as I like to do with these, I like to go in a chronological order. So let's start from the very beginning. Uh, I almost wanted to save this band, this artist, this album for another subgenre, but I'm like, ah, it's got to be here because this is kind of like... This is like the beginnings of everything we think of as hard rock. And I'm going to go all the way back to 1967, the debut album. From the Jimi Hendrix experience, Are You Experienced? All right, Mitch Mitchell, Noel Renning, Jimi Hendrix, the one of the early power trios, the great power trios alongside Cream. Arguably, you could throw Cream in here as well, but I think, you know, overall, you know, you listen to the music of the Jimi Hendrix experience. This is really where hard rock began, I think. You know, you can name all sorts of other bands from this period. Yardbirds, The Who, Blue Cheer, Cream, certainly, right? Vanilla Fudge, all, so many bands, right? But to me, the quintessential hard rock band, psychedelic as they were, from this time period, it's got to be this. Purple Haze, Manic Depression, Hey Joe, right? Third Stone from the Sun, Wind Cries Mary, Fire Foxy Lady, you know, I Don't Live Today, Jimmy's Amazing Guitar Work. It's bluesy, it's heavy, it's acid-laced, it's psychedelic, it's all those things. You know, this is the album that turned the rock world upside down, for sure. It's got to be here. That's my first pick for this top ten. All right, so this band that I'm going to name next... We could have talked about in the metal episode, 
because a lot of what they did early on influenced metal in a big way, but I never saw them as a metal band. A hard rock band, though? Hell yeah, and one of the best ever. Then you could pick really any of their early albums. Again, this is a starter pack, so I'm going to go with the one that I think every newbie to hard rock has to have in their collection, and it's from 1971. It's Led Zeppelin IV. You gotta have it because you gotta have Black Dog. You gotta have Stairway to Heaven. You gotta have When the Levee Breaks. You gotta have Rock and Roll. I mean, these are all like groundbreaking, popular, yes, but mandatory hard rock songs. You get a little bit of folk on here, right? You get some blues on here. You gotta have it. You gotta have some Zeppelin. Arguably, could have picked Zeppelin II. Sure, could have picked Zeppelin I. Could have picked Houses of the Holy, Holy, Physical Graffiti. Could pick any of them, right? But the one that's got those like legendary songs on it, right? This this is the album. Whether you've heard it to a million times, like I said, for those who know this well and have had it for 50 years and have listened to it a million times, you may be like, ah, that, that, but that album's so played out, right? All those songs are so played out. Yeah, but not to a newbie. That's who this is for, right? So if you're someone brand new to Zeppelin, never listened to Zeppelin before, I'd be surprised if anybody watching this show and watches this channel has never heard this album or maybe only heard it in passing. But, hey, if you're new to hard rock, you got to have this. Zeppelin 4. It's my next choice. All right. Continuing to go in order here. We're going to go to 1972. Again, this, this band could have arguably been mentioned in the earlier episode on metal because what they did early on greatly influenced metal. But, again, I never really saw them as a metal band. But as one of the great 70s hard rock bands, for sure, they're one of my favorite bands of all time. I'm going to pick Machine Head from Deep Purple, 1972. But Pete, isn't In Rock your favorite Deep Purple album of all time and one of your favorite albums of all time? Yes, it is. But that's not the album I'm going to give to a newbie to hard rock, right? Because you got to have this one. Why? Because this has Highway to Star. Highway Star. This has Smoke on the Water, right? This has Maybe I'm a Leo, Space Truck, and Lazy. You know, all these great songs, Pictures of Home, Never Before. This is the Deep Purple album for so many people. This is their biggest selling album. This is the album that had the most of their classic, classic songs. It's got great production, right? Yeah, I like the rawness and the ferocity of In Rock, but that's not what I'm going to give someone the first time listening to Deep Purple and Hard Rock in general. It's this one. Machine Head is my pick. Next up. We're going to go to 1973, a really, really important album for U.S. hard rock and metal. Arguably the first real American metal band, but it's still you listen to it today. It's more like really crunchy, metallic, bluesy hard rock, and that's the first Montrose album. Rock the Nation, Space Station Number 5, Bad Motor Scooter, Rock Candy, Bronny Montrose, Sammy Hagar, and the rest of the band. Mr. Carmasi, Mr. Church. Um, yeah, this is killer, killer stuff. Compact, crunchy, Ronnie Montrose's roaring guitars and those great Sammy Hagar vocals. A blueprint for a lot of stuff to come, including Van Halen and Boston and all sorts of other stuff. Um, yeah, such an important album, such an important album, greatly produced by Ted Templeman and just one of the most amazing hard rock albums ever released, 1973, Matros. Let's go to 1974. This will divide people right here because there's people who love this band and there's people who hate them. But you can't deny that when it comes to hard rock and especially U.S. hard rock, it doesn't get much better than this. And you have to have this album. If you're a first-time person discovering this style of music, you got to have Kiss. Self-titled debut. Why, you may ask? Strutter, Nothing to Lose, Firehouse, Cold Gin, Deuce, Black Diamond, 100,000 Years. That's all you need to know. You can say they weren't great on their instruments. You can say that they were more about the image and the stage show and the marketing. You could say all those things. But you can't deny that these are just great hard rock songs, catchy songs, pretty heavy songs. It's Kiss. It's Kiss. And it's on my list. 
1974. All right, 1975. Self-titled deal from this guy, debut from this guy who was making waves in another band before he went on his off on his own. The guy's name is Ted Nugent. We're going to go with his uh, self-titled debut from 1975. To me, you know, the first album I really thought of when I was knew I was doing all these episodes and thinking about the hard rock episodes, like, well, Ted Nugent, right? Because Ted, to me, was never really a metal guy, never really a metal guitar player. Ted was the def definition of a hard rock guitar player. And I think that all these classic early albums, they just exemplify everything that we love about hard rock, right? Short songs, blistering guitar solos, those great, memorable, melodic vocals and songs about, you know, drive around in cars, women, parties, uh, sex, all that kind of stuff, right? Stranglehold is a classic, classic song. It's heavy. It's got that great guitar solo. Stormtrooping is so much fun. You know, you got Snakeskin Cowboys, Motor City Madhouse, these upbeat, just raucous, just fun, rocking songs. Just what the doctor ordered, Queen of the Forest, excellent stuff. I mean, just just look at that great shot right there. Right? They just that's a, that's a hard rock band for you right there. Just awesome stuff. Ted Nugent's debut. Next up, we're gonna go to 1976. Doing a lot of 70s stuff here, right? Well, that's that was the decade for hard rock, the the, the beginnings of what we know as hard rock. This band, I went back and forth between two of their albums because you can make a case for either one of them. One, I think, is their definitive statement. The other one has their most well-known songs. So which do you go? I almost went with the other. But I went back and said, you know what? I'm going to go with the one here that I think is their greatest album. And that's Aerosmith Rocks. Like I said, you can go with Toys in the Attic. It's got two of their biggest and most well-known songs on it. But I think this album is stronger overall. And I think this gives you the essence of what Aerosmith were all about in the 70s. It's got Back in the Saddle, Last Child, right? Rats in the Cellar, combination, all these great rockers, sick as a dog. Nobody's Fall, terrific. There's a reason why a lot of metal bands covered Nobody's Fall, right? It's a great song. Get the Let Out, Licking a Promise and Home Tonight. It's just that basically the, the Aerosmith is just like the Stones on steroids, the American version of the Stones on steroids. All right, let's, let's take what was so great about the Stones and Zeppelin. We're going to do it our way. We're going to do it an American way. We're going to do it the Boston way. Awesome stuff. Steven Tyler. Mr. Whitford, Mr. Perry, and company. Yeah, just great, raunchy, raunchy American hard rock and roll. Awesome. Got to have it. Got to have it. All right, 1976. Also, I'm including, you know, there may be others that are more obvious, but I'm including this one from a personal standpoint because I think that this band is just so underrated and never quite gets their due but I think and I think they should have been huge and this album is just so awesome that if you're at all looking to get into hard rock you have to have this and there's others by them you'll probably want to get shortly there afterwards but I'm gonna go with Jailbreak by Thin Lizzy gotta have it the, the amazing twin guitar attack of uh, Brian Robertson and Scott Gorham the great vocals, lyrics, and bass playing of Phil Lynott. Brian Downey on drums. Doesn't get much better than this. And some of their classic songs around here are on here. You've got, of course, the big hit, The Boys Are Back in Town. You've got the great title track, Jailbreak. You've got Angel from the Coast. You've got Warriors. It's so heavy. It's slightly bluesy in spots. It's just like Fight or Fall, a cowboy song, which is just absolutely terrific. That should have been a mega, mega hit. The crushing closer, Emerald. And all sorts of other stuff. Romeo and the Little Lonely Girl. I mean, everything on here is really good. Running back, it's all great. It's melodic. It's heavy. And those lovely guitars all over the place. Just such an important album. You gotta have it, folks. You gotta have it. All right. Here's one that a lot of people wanted on the metal episode. And I could see it, right? I could see it. But I think they belong here. Uh, this is a groundbreaking album, a groundbreaking band. The guitar player is one of the greats of all time. Totally rechanged the game, just like Jimi Hendrix did a decade before. Going with the first Van Halen album. Yeah. Yes, it's more metallic than a lot of this other stuff here, but not quite metal. But it's close, right? There's, there's lots of stuff going on this album and the second album and the third and the fourth album, right? That lots of bands we call metal in the, nine, in the 80s, right, were kind of taken from. But this is just just kick-ass, kick-ass metal, uh, hard rock from another planet. 
uh, running with the devil, eruption, you really got me, ain't talking about love, my god, Jamie's crying, I'm the one, atomic punk, little dreamer, feel your love tonight, ice cream man on fire, oh my god, you got these David Lee Roth vocals, right, he's grabbing a little bit from Ian Gillen and Jim Dandy and doing his thing, and just, ah, oh, just so, so good, so, so good, this is just a classic, classic album, some amazing, amazing guitar playing on here, and the production, again, by Ten Templeman, right? That same guy who worked on the Montrose album, right? So, my final pick, uh, which I actually don't have a hard copy of, uh, I'm going to see if I can get a... Bear with me a second here. I'm not quite sure if I'm... No, I'm not going to be able to show a, uh, an image of it, but... It's Appetite for Destruction by Guns N' Roses from 1987. Now, everybody who knows me, watches the channel, know I'm not a big fan of Guns N' Roses, personally. However, uh, I fully understand and realize and accept the significance of that debut album from them. I mean, how can you not? Right? It doesn't matter that I don't really care for it all that too much. All too much. I understand and know how important Guns N' Roses was to hard rock music in the late 80s. And in 1987, you know, you had the White Snake album, you had this album, you had various other ones that were making lots of waves. But man, the presence and the impact of Appetite for Destruction, Slash, Axl Rose, and everybody else, songs like Mr. Brownstone, and you, you know, all, all those tracks, you know, all the songs, all the hit songs, right? Paradise City, all that stuff. I mean, you know, all the stuff, all the stuff. Welcome to the Jungle. You know all the songs, right? Huge album. Hugely influential band. Still a beloved band to this day. Never mind the fact that how quickly they kind of burnt out. And, you know, they didn't, never released a lot of albums and all that. I get it. But this debut album, mandatory, mandatory listening from the late 80s. And, you know, really inspired so many other bands after it. Even though, you know, they took their cue from bands like The Stones and from Zeppelin and Aerosmith, right? They, they, they took their influences and they kind of ran with it and made hard rock and heavy music popular once again, even though when so much was changing uh, as the 80s wore on going into the 90s, right? So a hugely important band and an album that, you know, if you're into the style of music or getting into the style of music, I should say, you need to have Appetite for Destruction, right? So those are my picks. So we got Appetite for Destruction by Guns N' Roses, Van Halen self-titled, Jailbreak by Thin Lizzy, Rocks by Aerosmith, Ted Nugent self-titled debut, Kiss self-titled debut, The Montrose self-titled debut, Machine Head by Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin IV, Zoso, whatever you want to call it, and are you experienced by the Jimi Hendrix experience? Those are my 10 picks. I do want to throw this out there because I'm sure we're going to get people who are going to ask, and I really wanted to squeeze them in, but it's like I only got 10 slots. But right right on the cusp, right after this is being number 11, is I'm going to go high and dry by Def Leppard. All right? One of those bands they include in the new wave of British heavy metal. Were they ever really metal? Nah, probably not, although that's as close as you get. But that's just a, that's a really great kick-ass hard rock album that I think I just wanted to at least mention. And yeah, there's others. You know, there's Blue Oyster Cult, and there's all sorts of other bands that I considered for this. Uh, ultimately, I only wanted to do 10. I, like I said, it could have done 15, 20, 50, all that kind of stuff. But for those folks who are looking to dive into hard rock for the first time ever, I think these are no-brainer choices for anybody to go dive in. And like I said, there might be other albums that I favor from some of these bands, for sure. I could tell you right off the bat, um, you know, I like other Led Zeppelin albums over Led Zeppelin 4. Uh, I have other favorites in the Deep Purple catalog. I have uh, other favorites in the Kiss catalog. You know, Hendrix, I think I have an album I like better than this one. Uh, you know, so... Thin Lizzy, arguably, sometimes it's Jailbreak, sometimes it's other albums, uh, you know... Van Halen, normally Van Halen one's my favorite. Ted Nugent, yeah, you can you can make a case for the first like three Van Halen, uh, Ted Nugent albums for sure. But like I said, uh, these are I think the best places for people to start on your journey into hard rock. And you know we could certainly pick the stuff in the '80s. The, you know there we could certainly you could pick stuff from some of the more glam bands. There's we could pick stuff from Rival Sons, right, for something a little bit more modern. You know that sort of thing. There's tons of places to go. But you got to start somewhere. 
and I feel you got to start with some classic era stuff first and then start to branch your way out. So for those watching who are newbies to hard rock, you got some work to do, right? So you got some investigating to do. For those of you who are well familiar with hard rock and have been listening to hard rock for as long as I have, you may have other choices. And that's great. Feel free to put them in the, in the comments below. There's no wrong answers here, folks. No wrong answers at all. But we want to help those folks who are trying to get into a style of music for the first time. That's what these are all about. So uh, anyway, leave your comments below. And we'll see you on the next one, right? we got more stuff coming. So we've got Prague progressive rock and we're eventually going to do branch off into different kinds of prog from different countries we're going to do uh, lots of different kinds of metal we're going to do progressive metal power metal death metal black metal thrash metal thrash metal might be next we're going to do classic rock i got a classic rock one that should be hitting sometime later this week i think and again that's uh the first place for someone to go maybe they never listened to rock much at all they were jazz fans their whole life or they've always listened to prog and never listened to anything other than that or maybe they've only been metal fans right well these are the classic rock or just general rock albums that i think uh, are important to anybody looking to discover uh that sort of style of rock music, right? You know, just the kind of classic rock, whatever classic rock means, right? It's a radio term, I know. So anyway, all this stuff is coming in the weeks and months ahead, so stay tuned for all of it. Visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube all together all the damn time. Please subscribe if you haven't already and click on that notification bell so you get alert of all of our content as a post. And please do hit the like button before you leave. Also down below, we get the links to our Ko-Fi page for channel donations, our merch page, and our Cameo page. Thank you in advance for all your support there. And we'll see you soon. Here are more stuff. Don't forget tomorrow in the prog seat. All about Gentle Giant. That's coming up tomorrow. We're going to pick our three favorite albums from Gentle Giant. A tough task for all of us. Uh, stay tuned and see what we choose. And uh, we'll see you then. I am P. Pardo. Have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye.